everyone. Welcome back. Please comment, rate, subscribe, follow, comment, subscribe, like the videos. Also share the videos. I want to thank everyone else that does like, watch, and share my videos. You folks are the absolute best. Listen, folks. There's a link tree down below. It has a link to all of my social media platforms. Please go down there. Follow me across all my social media platforms and talk to me because I talk back. Also down there as well as links to all of my YouTube pages. Please go down there, subscribe to all my YouTube pages, and turn on your notifications so when I post content, you folks will be in the know. Now with that said and done and put to the side, I've come to talk to you folks today about the New York Jets offensive coordinator position. Boy, oh boy. They're casting a wide net, just like Sulla said, and they're bringing a lot of folks in, and they're talking to people about this vacant offensive coordinator position and seeing what fits, all right? Now, again, once Mike LaFleur was gone, out the door, allowed to explore other opportunities, Sulla said, hey, we're going to cast a wide net, and we're going to see what shakes out, and that's exactly what they are doing. So we're going to discuss some of the guys that they brought in, some of the people that they've talked to as well about the position. And we're also going to discuss a few people that are now out on the market because they've left their respective teams. And, you know, there could be options for the New York Jets, okay, at the offensive coordinator spot. So first guy they brought in was Kevin Petullo, okay? The New York Jets interv interviewed Kevin Petullo as well. He's the Eagles passing game coordinator, okay? Eagles passing game coordinator. Some of you may be familiar with him. Okay, because uh, he was the Jets quarterbacks coach 2015 to 2016. Now, that was the year where we had Fitzmagic, we had Decker, we had Brandon Marshall, right? That offense was clicking and cooking, okay? And that was the year that they, those years were the years they set the franchise records. That offense set franchise records here, okay? Now, <laughs> I know a lot of people don't want to believe it, all right? Statistically, okay? That with Fitz at the helm, Decker, Marshall, that that offense, all right, statistically is the best offense the New York Jets have ever had. Don't believe me? Go look it up. Here's another little tidbit. Ryan Fitzpatrick, yes, Ryan Fitzpatrick <laughs> holds franchise records at the quarterback position for the New York Jets. If you think I'm lying, go look it up, all right? So he was there when that was going on. In 2018, Petullo became the Colts wide receiver coach. He held that position for about two seasons. Then in 2021, the Eagles hired him to be their passing game specialist. And we saw the passing game step up with him there. All right. They went from 29th to 14th to 9th in DVOA under him. Now, the thing I like about Petullo, he has a background in being a quarterback's coach. All right. And we all know that the New York Jets are dedicated to fixing Zach Wilson. We all know that that was an issue here as well, and that was talked about too, that once Coach Knapp passed away, rest in peace to Coach Knapp, Sulla didn't bring anybody in to really help in that room. And he even said himself, he, he didn't want another voice in that room. He wanted to, a silent room for the quarterbacks. And when you look back at that, that could have been a mistake. So when you are really tasking a new guy, a new offensive coordinator, that's going to be one of his tasks is fixing Zach Wilson. And having a quarterback's coach mind Having a quarterback's coach background is going to help you do that to help build the guy. Now, the thing I don't like about Batulo, he doesn't have any chops as a play caller, okay? That's, that's tough because we're in a situation where we want offensive production today. And if you coming in here trying to figure out your chops as a play caller and figure out your, your footing as an offensive coordinator here, this might not be the place for you to come and learn. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, we're expecting a lot this year. We're expecting the team to step up. And if you're still trying to figure things out, because, again, be your first time being an offensive coordinator, it can get rough. So that was the guy they brought in. Another guy they looked at as well, Nick Cayley. Nick Cayley's another guy as well that they're looking at. Uh, eight seasons with Bilicek, man. Eight seasons, all right? Uh <laughs> He's an offensive, he was an offensive assistant for two years, and then he was a tight ends coach for six years. He did coach the fullbacks as well, 2020 through 2021. And he also has Super Bowl experience. But here's another guy with no play calling experience as well. So here's a guy that the Jets could look at too, you know, and it's it's an interesting fit, but we'll see. He's also a guy that's pretty coveted by Bilicek as well. And there's gotta be a reason because Bilicek. If he's, you know, as coveted as a lot of people said that he is, there's got to be a reason why, okay? This guy could, could be the serious business. We know Bilicek, one of the greatest coaches of all time, and he's done so much. There's got to be a reason he wants to hold on to this guy, right? Marcus Brady as well was brought in. The Jets talked to him as well. Marcus Brady is currently the Eagles offensive consultant, okay? 
Now, Brady was an offensive coordinator before, all right? He was with the Colts 2021 through 2022. Frank Reich was there, was the head coach, but Frank Reich did fire him on November 1st, okay? At that time, the Colts were, what, they had like three wins, four losses, and one tie. They tried everything to kind of jumpstart the offense. They even switched quarterbacks. They went from Matt Ryan to Sam, Sam Ellinger and still nothing. The offense just couldn't get anything going. So he ended up letting him go, right? And keep in mind, Frank Reich at that time, still calling the play. So there's some questions that people have saying, hey, you know, Brady, yeah, he's been a, a coordinator, but can he be the guy that can call plays? You know, can he do that here? You know, what, what's going on? So We'll see. But he also had, again, uh, Brady has a background of being a quarterback's coach. He was 2019 to 2020. And uh, he became the offensive coordinator for the Colts when Nick Cerrone left for his job. So Brady's another guy that's a realistic option. Um, you know, I like him. I think he has a chance. Again, the Colts offense was up and down. But again, this is a new place, different place, different weapons. And again, he's a guy that has a quarterback's coach background, too, that can come and help. Uh, fix Zach Wilson. So they also brought in Brian Johnson. Now, Brian Johnson was a name that I was going back and forth with a lot of people because, again, I've made my position known. I want a veteran guy, a guy that's been an offensive coordinator before to be brought in here. But Brian Johnson was a guy that I talked about that if we can't get a vet, right, he's a guy that I'm looking at because of what he's been able to do there with the Eagles. Now, Brian Johnson is currently the Eagles quarterbacks coach okay and the Jets have talked to him about an offensive coordinator position here one of the reasons why I like him so much is what he's been able to do with Jalen Hurts for those of you that don't remember Jalen Hurts was I'm telling you coming off of a rough rookie season okay where people said that Hurts was trash that he had no business being in the league he was a bust there was people ready to throw him away Brian Johnson comes in there in 2021 and is able to really get Hurts to where he needs to go. And Hurts had a really solid 2021 season. Then he returned in 2022 and just went off the charts. He Jalen Hurts is really, really good. And a lot of that turning around of Hurts has been credited to Brian Johnson and the work he's been able to do there. Now, again... He doesn't have any offensive coordinator experience. He doesn't have any play calling experience. But if the New York Jets are committed to fixing Zach Wilson, here's a guy that could, you know, really help you in that department and learn, you know, the coordinator and the play calling and all that stuff as they continue forward. So Brian Johnson is another guy they brought in. They also brought in Nathaniel Hackett as well. All right. He interviewed Wednesday. Nathaniel Hackett is the son of Paul Hackett. All right. Paul Hackett was an offensive coordinator here with the New York Jets 2001 to 2004 uh, under Herm Edwards. All right. Now, here's the deal. He was the head coach of the Broncos. We all know how that ended. He was fired after 15 games. OK. Sulla and Hackett, though, do have a relationship. Right. They've worked together in the past. They worked together at the Jags 2015, 2016. Hackett became the Jaguars OC in 2016 through 2018. That was under Doug Marone. And when he did that, the Jags offense got going. They were actually sixth overall in total offense. And he did that with Blake Bortles as his quarterback. And we all know that Blake, quarterback, Blake Bortles at quarterback was terrible. He, he was trash, right? So if you can get an offense helmed by Blake Bortles, right, Get going, and you're six overall in offense, and you can get to an AFC championship. That says a lot about you as an offensive coordinator now, doesn't it? He also went to the Packers as well, 2019-2021. He worked under Matt LaFleur, which has a relationship with Seller as well. And uh, they had a top 10 offense. In 2020, you know, when he was there too, they had the number one scoring offense. So we've seen him be able to work. And again, we know that Matt LaFleur as well has worked with the Shanahan system, which is something that we ran here, right? When Mike LaFleur was here. So listen, Hackett, bad head coach, right? Not a good head coach, but he can be one heck of an offensive coordinator here. And here's a guy that can come here and really get rolling, really get clicking. A veteran guy, he's been a coordinator before in various other places. He's also been a head coach too, even though that didn't work out. He can come here and really bring a lot of that experience to our offense. He's a guy that once he steps in, he's immediately respected. Because, again, he worked with the Packers. He's done a lot of great things in this league. So I could see him bringing, being the guy that could be brought in here, too. 
Now, they did speak with Daryl Bevel as well, uh, you know, Dolphins quarterback coach. We've seen him coach various places. He's been an offensive coordinator before, uh, you know, and him and Sulla have a relationship as well. But Bevel declined uh, the New York Jets job along with the Washington Commanders job too. Uh, he wanted to stay where he's at at his squad. So that's something I speak to as well is that it's going to be tough to fill this Jets job with all the expectations, questions about job security, a lot of people may not, some coordinators may not want to deal with Zach Wilson. There's a lot of question marks as well at the quarterback position going forward. So th that that was a guy that declined us was Bevel. Um, another guy we just brought in as well as Chad O'Shea. Uh, Chad O'Shea is the currently the Browns passing game uh, coordinator. He's also the Browns wide receiver coach too. Uh, we saw him spend uh, like a decade with the Browns. He was also an offensive coordinator under Brian Flores with the Dolphins. So Here's a guy that has some coordinator experience, too, that can really help us if he's the guy that uh, is, is picked up and brought in here. Now, keep in mind, there's other opportunities out there as well. Coordinators are, you know, moving and shaking constantly. Greg Roman is a guy that's out there. He stepped down uh, from the Ravens uh, job over there, you know, their offensive coordinator position. He stepped down, so he's out on the market. Byron Leftwich as well has been fired, uh, so he's out on the market, too. So there's various other names and opportunities that could be brought in here at the New York Jets to interview and possibly end up being our offensive coordinator. So a lot of interesting names, a lot of interesting guys that the Jets are going to constantly, you know, be looking at, you know, and we'll see how this shakes out. But the Jets, you know, I'm hoping that they get a solid veteran offensive coordinator. It's going to be able to come in here and handle business. And even if they don't get a veteran, let's get an, you know, inventive offensive mind that's going to be able to come in here and really get the offense clicking early. So comment down below, comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. How do you folks feel about this offensive coordinator search? Who are your favorites? Who do you want to see end up being the Jets offensive coordinator? Comment down below. Let's go back and forth. You folks have a good one. Peace.